I have the enormous privilege of being able to introduce Michael Hudson, um, an enormous influence on me and I think one of the most important economists today. He is the president of the Institute for the Lo Study of Long-Term Economic Trends. He was a Wall Street financial analyst, a distinguished professor, a distinguished research professor of economics at the University of Missouri, Kansas City, and the author of many books. Um, and he and Radhika also host a show together that I am honored to host over at Geopolitical Economy Report. So with that said, Michael, the floor is yours. Uh, I want to talk primarily about the political points and the analytic frame that uh, Radek has used. Uh, and I think the basic theme of her book uh, is that what used to be socialism has been replaced by a very technocratic view that avoids looking at uh, today's economic polarization uh, between the 1% and the 99% uh, in terms of class interests. Uh, she focuses, uh, on, as I do, on the financial interests that have replaced industrial capitalism as uh, the organizing force. Uh, in, in today's capitalism is very different from uh, what occurred in Marx's day and what he was uh, analyzing, and the world has not uh, turned out as optimistically uh, as Marx had hoped that industrial capitalism would evolve into socialism. Uh, instead of uh, advocating the socialization of infrastructure, you have today's social democratic parties uh, uh, advocating a sort of a public-private partnership. Uh, now, uh, our, uh, Radica's point is that this kind of partnership is not really going to have much uh, for the public sector except, uh, as they say, in socializing uh, the losses and privatizing uh, the profits and the, uh, the financial gains. Uh, but if you look at public health, education, credit creation, what used to be social democratic uh, and uh, labor parties have turned Thatcherite. So they've, they've followed uh, the British Labor Party uh, and going even uh, more to the uh, technocratic rights. Uh, and largely, this is because uh, finance has become uh, the, the core. Now, this is difficult to fit into most people's class analysis of society because uh, finance is not a class issue as such. Uh, Marx pointed out that interest-bearing debt and bank money creation are external to the economy of production and consumption. Uh, they're imposed on it. Uh, and that's why he said economies don't need a rentier class. Economies don't need a landlord class. They don't need a banking class. Uh, uh, and the role of industrial capitalism to Marx was to get rid of the rent-seeking classes, to get rid of the landlords, to get rid of the uh, monopolists and uh, get rid of the uh, predatory banking and basically to make all of this part of the industrial economy. Uh, and instead, that hasn't uh, worked. And the uh, socialist movements have not analyzed uh, how seriously this has not worked. Uh, and uh, really what's at issue is wh what is ex exploitation today? Uh, and how has it gone beyond what uh, the traditional left has uh, analyzed, and that's, I think, what uh, Radek is uh, focusing on. Uh, labor is not only exploited by being employed and having the employer, the capitalist, sell its products at a markup. Uh, today, labor is exploited by having to go into a lifetime of debt if it uh, uh, wants to buy a home of its own uh, or to get an education to get a job or to borrow to buy a, a car to drive uh, to the job uh, and or to pay for the, for the medical bills. All of these things that were expected uh, to be uh, socialized and uh, under a rentier economy that's dominated by the banks and landlords and monopolists, uh, you, you do have a, a rentier class that obtains income uh, at the overall economy's expense and is not part of it. That's why uh, I'm very dubious about uh, uh, the idea of measuring American versus China's uh, economic power in terms of GDP, uh, since a lot large part of Radica's book is how societies have coped with the, the, uh, uh, the virus, uh, the coronavirus, 
uh, look at the fact that in the United States, uh, medical care and health care is 18% of GDP. This is more than any other country. Uh, why, uh, in other countries, it could be maybe 5% of GDP. Uh, it's much lower in China. So all of this is what I think of as empty GDP. It's uh, rent-seeking, it's exploitative, it's unnecessary costs, what Marx called the faux fray, the false costs of uh, production. So uh, it's bloat. Uh, and do we really want to say, well, America's beat uh, China in the race to have a bloated economy? Uh, the, the largest part of the American GDP turns out to be Rent-seeking classes, uh, how, uh, the rising in the price of housing is counted as part of GDP. Uh, interest charges are part of GDP. If you're uh, making a uh, credit, you're late in your credit cards, and your uh, interest rate goes up from 19 percent to 30 percent, that's all added to GDP. America's winning that part of the GDP uh, uh, race, but it's an empty GDP, and uh, China's success is doing what uh, a good industrial capitalist country was supposed to do and avoiding this bloat, uh, getting uh, avoiding the whole kind of superstructure of financialization that has uh, prevented the United States from actually uh, competing uh, with China. There's no way that somehow the United States can say, we're going to isolate China, and that's going to enable us to go back to uh, producing our own uh, cars and consumer goods and uh, uh, chips. Uh, nothing is going to enable the United States to do it because of its high uh, uh, financial costs, its high real estate costs, its high healthcare uh, costs, and its uh, mo monopoly costs. It's painted itself into a corner. Uh, and that's what uh, somehow the left has been part of this uh, product uh, process because it's ignored uh, the role of rentier wealth. Uh, and, and it focuses on uh, industrial uh, com uh, conflict between employers and their workers. And that certainly is a very important point, but it misses uh, the big point, uh, the sort of vulgar Marxist uh, view that uh, really came out of uh, uh, Stalinism was just uh, capitalists or exploitators, exploiters, not uh, the state not uh, uh, any other class. And uh, the technocratic reformers uh, have looked at uh, all of this in terms of, of profit. Uh, I, I'm very wary of comparing uh, um, the profits of American uh, industry uh, to uh, profits of other countries, because uh, the aim of a corporation in America today is not to make a profit. It's to make absolutely no profits at all. Everything is expensed and counted as part of uh, GDP so that there's no income tax on profits. Uh, they do this by uh, offshore accounting, by uh, offshore banking centers, by uh, fake, de fake costs like uh, a depreciation for real estate. Uh, if you look at the actual statistics of what goes into how the GDP sausage is made, uh, you find uh, quite a different uh, picture uh, than you get. And uh, what's really at issue is what's going to be the role between uh, government uh, and the financial sector and uh, the industrial uh, sector. And I think toward the end, uh, at the end of the book, Radhika makes the points of let's uh, compare the analysis that she's using and that I use to what uh, uh, other people that uh, uh, represent what's called the left are saying. Uh, she quotes uh, Maria uh, Mazzucato is urging a private public uh, partnership uh, for gr uh, greater efficiency without profit, but profit's supposed to be the aim of the uh, private sector. What is the private sector after? And uh, 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 when it makes a deal with uh, uh, the, the government, uh, a pu public-private partnership like Thames Water, uh, you have in Thames Water nearly bankrupt, uh, but it's made a fortune for its privatizers by going, going bankrupt. Uh, the, under finance capitalism, you make a profit by driving a company bankrupt and leaving it as a shell. Thames Water borrowed an enormous amount of money. 
What did it use the money for? It did not use it to produce clean water uh, and uh, make a capital investment in uh, fixing the leaks and all of its water pipes or doing what it promised to do. It borrowed money and it paid it to itself as a dividend, as a special dividend, as uh, management fees. Uh, it borrowed money paid to itself, leaving a bankrupt shell in its wake. Uh, this is uh, how the savings and loan associations uh, were looted in uh, the 1980s, uh, for instance. Uh, and there have been a lot of studies about how uh, making uh, making money financially, uh, because finance in uh, the West is primarily predatory, making money by finance leaves the whole economy as an emptied out shell where there's an enormous amount of debt that's owed by the economy at large to maybe the 1% of uh, uh, the financial class that still isn't looked at as a financial class uh, and uh, leaves the economy uncompetitive as an industrial economy. Uh, that's what China is uh, uh, trying to avoid. And that's really the task uh, before Russia, uh, before other countries. Uh, and I'm surprised that uh, uh, Mazzucato didn't discuss someone like Simon Patton. Uh, he doesn't appear in today's discussions very much, but he was America's first economics professor at the first business school, the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania in the, in the 1880s and 1890s. And Simon Patton said that public infrastructure should be looked at as a fourth factor of production, uh, it, it, government spending, but the aim of this factor of production is not to make a profit. Uh, it, it's not trying to make wages or rents or uh, profit a, a capital. It's trying to help the rest of the economy uh, make higher real wages, higher uh, profits for capital by providing the basic needs, uh, education, uh, transportation, uh, public health at a loss. And if the government's role in infrastructure is to provide public health uh, uh, at a loss, then corporations don't have to pay it. And uh, if they provide uh, transportation at a loss, then uh, labor doesn't have to pay, uh, bear the cost of transportation in getting to work. Uh, the capitalists don't have to bear uh, the cost of, of transportation. The whole idea of public uh, infrastructure, of socializing medicine, socializing education, socializing uh, uh, transportation and communications is to help industrial capitalism. And that's why it was the industrial capitalists themselves in the United States, in Germany, uh, in every successful industrial company that moved towards uh, uh, socializing uh, uh, the basic needs in order to create a low cost economy that could undersell and compete with other capitalist economies more efficient. And the most uh, more efficient uh, economy would be the one that can undersell uh, its opponents by being more socialist than they were. And that's what led Marx and the socialists uh, in the 19th century to think, well, industrial capitalism is going to evolve into socialism. Uh, and uh, they, their assumption was that industrial capitalists would act in their own self-interest. That hasn't happened. That what has happened is a financial capitalism that is not in the self-interest of the dynamic of industrial capitalism. It's become something entirely different. It's become a, it's a, a rentier, a financialized society. It's become what we call finance capitalism instead. And the victory of finance capitalism is uh, basically to undo the whole industrial capitalist revolution to free economies, to free markets from the landlords, from the banks, from the monopolists, and uh, produce a low-cost uh, economy. That was the whole idea of efficiency, that socialism was supposed to be uh, uh, efficient by creating its own uh, markets. Uh, and I think uh, uh, Radica makes that point very clearly in her book. Uh, the one uh, I think she's a little unfair when she uh, critiques MMT. Uh, I, I think her discussion is too partial. Uh, and as one of the uh, uh, founders of MMT, I, I have to uh, point out 
what what I mean by it and what most of us mean by it. Uh, it's it's point. Uh, it doesn't discuss class interests as such. Uh, uh, that's uh, Radica's uh, uh, critique, and she's absolutely right. It's not a doctrine of class interest. It's a doctrine of how money creation works. Uh, and its point is that government money creation is no more inflationary than private sector lending uh, to finance a budget deficit. That government's running a bu budget deficit pump money into the economy, uh, and every economy needs money and credit to operate on. And if the government does not provide this credit by running a budget deficit, then uh, the economy is going to have to do what it did in the late years of the Bill Clinton administration. It's going to have to borrow from the commercial banks uh, and uh, at interest and uh, at enormous interest. And it's going to have to uh, uh, do what banks lend uh, money for. And that is things that uh, help the financial sector, not that help the industrial uh, economy grow. So uh, MMT is a way of government uh, controlling the allocation of uh, credit, the allocation of resources, and foreign uh, 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 forward planning. And if the government does not take the lead uh, in uh, uh, as planner, then uh, the, the neoliberal idea of getting rid of government is uh, means uh, a kind of uh, 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 privatization. It means that the center of planning is going to be in Wall Street and the financial sectors. That's what the libertarian philosophy is. It's uh, central planning, much more centralized than any any uh, democratic government because it's centralized in the hands of the 1%. The libertarians and uh, uh, the neoliberal left want a centralized planning in the hands of the wealthy people because they say most wealth is created financially. So uh, if we want an efficient economy, let's create wealth. And you can create much more wealth financially by uh, cannibalizing an industrial firm than actually investing in, uh, in uh, 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 industry. So uh, the whole point of MMT is how is money created by the government? Well, uh, that's not the whole of MMT analysis, because it's true that uh, Stephanie uh, Kelton, uh, who she criticizes, doesn't discuss class interest in the talk. And uh, she just explains uh, what it is, uh, uh, what money creation is. But uh, MMT, is, uh, we've gone around the world together. And her role is to give the introductory technical uh, discussion of MMT. And then uh, my role is to come on second and say, the key is, what are you going to create money for? You can create money in the way that Donald Trump uh, and uh, uh, Vice President Dick Cheney created money. You can create money to go to war. You can create money to bail out the banks, uh, as uh, Obama did. You, you can create uh, uh, money for tax cuts, as Trump did. Or you can create money by actually spending money on infrastructure, on, on labor, on employment, on social, uh, socially uh, productive forms of investment. So uh, th this is the whole po point of the MMT is, is that money should not be uh, created for the use by the financial sector to do what Radica quite rightly create, uh, 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 criticizes the financial sector for. Money should be created by the state to promote economic growth. That is what has enabled China's economy to become so much more efficient than the US economy because it's treated money as a public utility. Uh, it, it is not commoditized money. Uh, like occurs in the United States and in the West, uh, and as uh, the neoliberal uh, left wants to do. If, treated, uh, if the government creates money, then uh, it can decide what do we want to create money for to lower the economy's cost of production, to increase capital investment, to uh, to become uh, economically independent uh, as uh, China's become independent. And I like the comment be uh, before that was made about uh, Huawei. Uh, the United States has imposed sanctions uh, on uh, uh, China, thinking that, well, if we impose sanctions on Russia and China, then uh, they're going to be, they're going to, uh, uh, be crowded out 
of uh, this field. And uh, what they don't realize is that imposing sanctions on a country has the same effect as this country produce uh, 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 enacting protective tariffs on itself. It forces the country either to become self-sufficient or to become dependent on the United States that would love to monopolize uh, computer chips and high technology uh, and as intellectual property rights to yield mon uh, monopoly rent. Uh, and what happens that uh, countries, obviously, uh, the, uh, the global majority today uh, wants to realizes they need to avoid becoming uh, dependent on rent seeking the United States by being uh, uh, independent in essentials. And so everything that uh, the West, the United States and Europe imposes as a sanction ends up losing this market forever. Because once other countries become independent, creating their own computer chips or whatever technology you're using, they don't need to import anymore. Now, uh, the point has been made that China uh, spent, has been spending more money on importing computer chips than on importing oil. Well, just imagine this whole market has been lost to the United States and Europe. And uh, that means that instead of uh, uh, successfully consolidating control and centralizing it in the United States companies and, com and uh, uh, companies that are under U.S. Uh, control, it's lost it's lost the market. It's lost uh, everything forever. Uh, and that is the basic dynamic that uh, Radic and I talk about in our uh, our program. And I think that's uh, the basic dynamic uh, in, that she described in the book. Why hasn't the left realized that this is the way to go? Uh, why, why, why have they suddenly let themselves be hijacked? Uh, I think, uh, and indeed, uh, uh, to save uh, the rest of society from this, what uh, what is really important in understanding economy? That I think is what the book uh, the book uh, is a great contribution for, and to me, that's the whole point of it. I'm Michael Hudson. I'm appearing here for the International Manifesto Group. If you like this video and ones like it, please subscribe. For more information, go to the address on the screen.